and the children will be obedient unto the fathers and the mothers. That's our cry in this evening. Lord, your blueprint for the families be restored. Your blueprint for the governments be restored. Your perfect gospel of hope for the churches, which is the truth. In Jesus' name, we're going to settle for nothing less but the gospel of truth. In Jesus' name, I want you to take your seed, your financial seed into your hand. And if there's nothing, put it in your hand as if you have got something in your pocket. And let us just hold this for a second or two as the ushers is preparing to come around. But I want the ushers to run, run through the pews because we're ready to sow. We are ready to give to the Lord which belongs anyway to Him. So Father, this is my seed. Maybe I have nothing in my hand, but there is. I speak it as if it is there. This is what I would desire to give to you tonight, Lord. This seed that's in my hand I let it go I let it go in faith that you will provide in my need I let it go I give it freely I give this finances and the seed willingly I choose to give it I choose to trust you for the rest of this month I choose to trust you, God, that you will open up heavens above me, that you will supply more than my need because you are able to do abundantly above what I could pray for, ask or desire. And Father, this is not mine. It belongs to you. You are the giver of all finance. And Father, the, the hands that are hoping to receive, you will open up the storehouses of heaven. And we're going to hear a testimony. We're going to hear a testimony of your provision for the month of August. You are the God that sees. You are the God that provides. We thank you, Jesus, from the bottom of our hearts that you are our provider. Help us to sow the seed that you want us to sow. And may those seeds multiply and harvest and, and in abundance. We just praise your holy name and say thank you, thank you, thank you for all your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I liked your seed. Say I wanted to have your seed. <laughs> you can take your seed. I would love you to come tell your testimony of how God came through for you. I, I want to encourage you to come share. You know, when you hear something that happened to someone else, it stirs faith. In your heart, if God could have done it for Renata, surely he can do it for me. He's no respecter of persons. He loves us the same. He absolutely loves us the same. And I want you to enjoy, sit back and receive that what God has planned for you individually. And also the corporate anointing, the prophetic anointing, it opens up storehouses of heaven it opens up opportunities of breakthrough it opens up business ventures it opens up houses it's not about the material things but it opens it up as well I want you to look to the beautiful drawings, paintings that Meryl had done and Alfred and um, we are so privileged in this house to have godly people.
that use their natural skill and their ability for God's kingdom. And we are on the receiving side of their blessing. The blessing and the creativity God has given them. And I want you to look at these beautiful sketches. And if you desire to put something on a canvas, say it to the Lord. Lord, I want that anointing. Because many of us do see pictures. Then we go to someone. Oh, Meryl, please do the thingy. You know how to do it. But you see, there's a creativity in the atmosphere of the prophetic. And we have such a privilege to have them with our family. So call them, book them for courses or whatever. Waar is Adrian vanavond? Is mys om nodig het vir my tafelkie. Oh, there's an, oh, thank you, my lieve ding. There's an, uh, another um, thing that I just want to share with you. Is there anyone in the house that would love to be baptized? Stick up your hand. Next Saturday, August, in the Western Cape, there's a Baptism service, one o'clock in Melpostrand. So please come. Ask the Lord. There's just something in obedience. Not because there's opportunity, but there's an opportunity. And if God works it in your heart, come. Be prepared and be ready for the season. We're going to walk into September in the season of what, Lady M? Rosh Hashanah. Whoa! There's a shaking and there's a moving and there's a pulling and there's a tucking and the enemy doesn't like it. But God is going to take this body, the church, in the season of Rosh Hashanah. So maybe it's a washing off of the old season and getting up, getting ready for the new season. But I just put it out there so that you know there's an opportunity. I want to share something, just a short word, and I, then we're going to do the impartation. 2 Peter 1 verse 20 states so beautifully, it says, But understand this first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of or comes from one's own personal or special inter- interpretation. Verse 21, for no prophecy was ever made by the act of a human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoken from God. From the beginning of the first book, Genesis, until the last one, Revelations. The testimony about Jesus Christ, it is the release of the spirit of prophecy. So prophecy always have to take you back to Yeshua, to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus was and still is the biggest prophet ever lived on the face of this earth. The fivefold, he operate, he set the example. And then John the Baptist came along. And now in the latter days, we say that a prophet, a spokesperson from Father God, How do you recognize a true prophet and a false prophet? You just look at the fruit that person is having and developing and carrying and living it out. His life is not in hiddenness, it's out in the open. But what is the function of a prophet? Only two things, only two. What's the function of a prophet? As John the Baptist did, he was preparing the way for the coming of the Lord. Oi. He was preparing the way for the coming of the Lord. He was in the womb when Mary came to visit Elizabeth. And when Mary came with Jesus in her womb, John lit. Opgewonde. He is the koning van die konings. In the womb. Supernaturally. And John the Baptist was the forerunner for the Messiah. He who was to come, the king who will 
put his kingdom, reign his kingdom on the earth. A supernatural kingdom. A kingdom you can only enter by faith. A kingdom and a relationship you can only uphold by having faith in God. Faith in your relationship. That's why we do not do religion in this house. We do relationship. We do not follow the doctrine of men and demons. We follow the doctrine of the Word of God, the Bible, the truth. You see, it's the Rima Word, the Word of God, connected with the Logos Word. Holy Spirit inspired Word through confirmation. And the second thing that the prophets today do, supposed to do, as John did in the first place, and this is the most amazing part, is now we are preparing the people for the coming of the Lord. The vision of Powerhouse is to equip and empower those who come through the doors and those who say, I want to be part of this family. You know, we only had eight people this morning that said to Edwina, we want to be added. So we prepared eight beautiful love letters that they now part of the family. And there was a whole bunch of people as the Holy Spirit just placed on their hearts, this is my tribe, this is my place, this is my home. And for a few men that I prayed for, I cried because I felt like for, for the first time they came home. And it's not about powerhouse, it's about the house. That's their people. On Sepetekirisuri, the end of my dam. The people that I know, that knows God and desire to run after Him. So this is the most important journey of your life. It's the kingdom journey. You can have two birthdays and two days of death or either one day of death. The birthday, the first one when you came into the world through your mother's womb. And then the second birthday is when you were reborn from above. In COVID-19, when you have seen it, after the mask is going to And then you live your life and you die just once. When you die in the natural, your heart stops beating. You stop the breathing and you walk through and you take your first breath in eternity. Only one death. Because when the, the, the big and the amazing day when we come before God, the Father, the judgment seat. But if you have not on this earth gave your heart to the Lord, you do not have the second birthday, you were not reborn, then you've got two d days or, or um, yeah, dates when you will die. In the natural and then someday in the spiritual for eternity. So while it's day and you're on this earth, your life counts, your decisions counts. Do not neglect the calling and the knocking of God on your heart. Oi! Do not neglect His calling on your life. Is there somebody is in your life that says, like a husband or a wife or a friend or a workmate or someone that says, no, don't do it. And it's scriptural and you know the calling of God. Oh, be obedient, pay the price. Pay the price. The word say, "Die wat nie sy vader en sy moeder en sy vrou en sy man en sy kinders verlaat en my volg nie, is my koning kryk nie waard nie." It doesn't mean divorce the husband or the wife. You choose them in the first place. So stuck with them. Work it out. So so beautiful is the promises of God, preparing the people for the coming of the Lord. That is your responsibility. It's not Francois. It's not only Pastor Marks. Was Clinton kind? Da Not Pastor Clinton's responsibility. Not was my Liffy. Not even Peary's responsibility. They are leaders of churches. It's not only they have the responsibility to teach the congregation. Go out, go out quickly, quickly. Go get the people saved. Matthew 27, I lost the whipster. Go quickly. Go to the towns. Go to Samaria. Go to Judea. Go to Jerusalem. Go quickly. Go quickly. Push the darkness back. You see, Jeremiah is a promise of the word of God. You like what those who finish, I can't see the storm train. 
want die lichies gaan nou nou af. En Frans ook aan die wacht, ek klaar maak jy, want hy wil aangaan. Kijk gegoed, Jeremiah 1 verse 9, it says, nee, ek hou nog by tyd. Then the Lord, oh, ek gaan ons dit starig lees. Then the Lord stretch out his hand, sit jou hand op jou lip, jou lip, hand op jou lip, and he touched my mouth. The Lord God stretch out his hand, put his hand, touch my mouth, and the Lord said, Oh, behold, hear me. I have put my words, God's word, in your mouth, and I have appointed you <laughs> this day over the nations, the governments, the seas, pointed you over the nations and over the kingdoms. Kingdoms over the kingdom of darkness. God has appointed the blood-washed child of God over the kingdoms of darkness. Don't run away in fear when you hear the name Beelzebub, Molech, and all these Satan, Satan and demonic things. Do not fear them. Do you know why? Because they are actually like, they know who Jesus is. They know who you are because Jesus is inside of you and they don't like you. But you know, it's so good to be popular in hell. It's good that hell knows your name. It's supposed to be like that. Over the kingdoms to do what? Oh, that's my most amazing. Francois, come nader. I say to uproot, break down, to destroy. Come, Francois. To overthrow. Kijk hoe sê die man doodstil. Do Rita, jy het autoriteit oor hom. Sê. <laughs> to destroy, to overthrow, to build and to plant. So when the kingdom of darkness is coming against you, oh, don't run to your pastor. Oh, I need a word from God. You have it, you have it, you have it. It says, then you uproot the lies. That's what we uproot. Come, the lies. You break down the schemes of the enemy. You fight with the word of God. You use the scriptures as your weapon because it's a weapon. You use the scriptures. You fight with the word. How do you fight? You say to the enemy, Jeremiah 1 9 says, God touch my mouth. I will not use my mouth to lie, to gossip, to slander, or speak evil, or to curse. I say, to destroy, to overthrow. That's in your, it's in your power, it's in your ability for your own life. And when you pray for someone, you uproot. What do you uproot? A wortel. Wortel van alle kwaad. A wortel het baie worteltjes en sy worteltjes. If you can get a strong man, kom alles uit. You uproot the root of sin. You uproot the thing that is demonic in someone's life. You uproot it in your own life. Okay, so in the last line is to build and to plant. Oh wow, God has touched our mouths to build and to plant. And it's in the building and it's in the planting, establishing that we do what? We prepare the people of the coming of the Lord. And then it doesn't matter what day or hour because he doesn't know even, he's waiting for his father to say, go now, go now. Imagine he's sitting on his horse, Skopomir. And I stand up sy pote and I say, oh, I just want to go, want die leisels hou sy bek terug, die paard sin. And I wach, and I is opgewonde, jy hulle paard gesien, wat wil hardloop, en hy word teruggehou. And even Jesus says, I can't wait, because I went to heaven to do what? To intercede for his bride. To pray for them before my father. To bring excuses, to say, Lord, oh please forgive them, they don't know it yet, but please forgive them. I'm preparing a house, for you. I'm preparing a home for you. God will give you the desire of your heart if you first seek the kingdom and to establish his reign on earth to overthrow the powers of the enemy. So Francois is going to minister to us about the planting. 
ka naman ang formal. I don't know what you said what I must say, but I'll, I'll say what I hear in my heart. So, Dr. Zoe was talking about Jeremiah 1. But he said in Jeremiah 1, Before I formed you in the womb of your mother, I've called you. And I know there are sitting people tonight, you are sitting here, and you hear this word and you know, I'm called, I'm called. I'm asking you, are you, do, are you doing what God has told you to do? Tonight we want to release the prophetic power of the living God in your life. Now I want to ask uh, Dr. Mark, Dr. Clinton, come and stand with me please. And we want some women also. Come, Zoe. Dorita. Come and stand with us. Let's just release this. The word of God in Jeremiah 1 says, when he said, what did you see? I saw the almond branch. He said, you've, you've seen well. I'm going to perform my word. It's a promise from God. When you hear the voice of God and you say what God is saying, He will perform His word. So I just want to ask you, are you ready to just release? Just release in us. I think you're the senior one here. Yeah? Just release the prophetic in the people of God. And please, it's not men that's doing it, it's not women. It's really God that's doing it. Just receive when God is saying. Just release. Hallelujah. Can we can we stand? You know there's a I I strongly I, I strongly believe this. What um, Prophet Zoe was saying here. That Rosh Hashanah is going to be a season of Tremendous shaking. He's first going to shake the church. He's going to shake his church. I believe that. Because without the shaking, we will not be able to receive the glory. But in the shaking will come a, a deep repentance in that shaking. Amen. Amen. And out of repentance will come a cry from us, His church, to return to holiness, holiness, holiness. The church has neglected holiness. Amen. I can prophesy to everyone here tonight. But holiness and righteousness, God is calling His church back to holiness and righteousness. I, I, I prophesy tonight in the name of Jesus. I prophesy tonight that there are some of you that God will call to come up higher. To come up higher. Higher in a higher dimension that you've ever known before. To come up higher. 